Friends, we are grateful to God this Holy Saturday, even as we've been sharing the Word of God together. It's been great to have this time just to go through scriptures together and just enjoy uh, this journey as we reflect on the crucifixion of Christ this Easter. It's been a great time together. Allow me to pray before we start, because what I'm about to share today is going to blow your mind. You can't just wait and hear this. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for a wonderful day, and we are grateful again for giving us an opportunity to hear your word. Grant me and my viewers a wonderful time and a special inspiration as we listen and meditate on your word this morning. This we humbly ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Allow me to read the words of this hymn, this special hymn that has just been sung, Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your world alone has power to save us, make us your living voice. Longing for food, many are hungry. Longing for water, many are thirsty. Make us your bread broken for others, shared until all are fed. What a beautiful hymn that is, was written by Bernadette Farrell on the 90s. And, you know, originally this hymn was written for the dedication of the church, and this song actually became one of Benedict's most enduring, beloved compositions. In fact, the second stanza suggests that while there is a longing for God to come and be active and bring peace among us, it is important for us as Christians to share the responsibility to actually bring peace among us. And especially during this season of elections in our country, it is important for us to preach peace and to declare peace in our neighborhood and wherever we go. The truth of the matter, as Bernadette Farrell has written in this song, you notice that there's a push for Christians to become a voice for those who are in trouble and those who are in despair, to bring hope, peace, and joy and love to those who are in despair. I don't know whether you've been in that state of longing, where you long to see something amazing. And one of the people that I want to read about to you today is a man who was in that situation. And I'm going to read from the gospel according to Luke chapter 23, for, for beginning to read from verse 50. It talks about a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their tradition and action. He came to the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph of Arimathea and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on Sabbath in obedience to the command of the, to, to the, command of the, of the word of God. And this is the gospel of Christ. Now, Joseph and his friend and Nicodemus were both members of the council, of the Jewish council, but they did not, I mean, they, they had not been present to vote against Jesus. In actual fact, if you read Mark 14, verse 64, it states that the whole council condemned Jesus, and that could not have happened if Joseph and Nicodemus were there. These people had their faith in God already. So I'm sure this, uh, this, the, the council arriving to this judgment was, was done without them being present. And so it is likely that Joseph and Nicodemus had learned from the Old Testament scriptures that Jesus would die. Most likely they had learned that, and that's why they went and they decided to take a solitary time and reflect on the promise that was made about Christ, the Christ. 
So they agreed to take care of his burial. Now, the new tomb that the Bible talks about was likely, uh, was likely Joseph's. That's what some people are to actually argue. But other people have argued that Joseph, having known that Christ was to die, decided of himself to go and prepare a special tomb for Christ so that Christ would be laid there near Golgotha, near Golgotha. And no rich, and, 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 and it, it is a fact that it was, it, was, it was very difficult at that time for somebody to really prepare his own grave. So when Jesus died, Joseph immediately goes to Pilate, then asks for permission to have the body of Christ given to him. And he tenderly takes the body, makes sure he gets it from the cross, quickly carries to his garden, washes the body, wrapped it with spices. And this is supposed to be a temporary burial. And I believe Joseph of Arimathea knows, he believes that Christ is to rise again. Then they return after Sabbath with the ladies and they take a break because it was Sabbath, I mean, the, the, the Sabbath time. Now when they lay Jesus in the new tomb, something interesting happened because condemned Criminals lost the right to, for proper burial. Condemned criminals were not given proper burials. But for him, but for Christ, he received a proper burial, despite the fact that they condemned him as a criminal. Now, after, amazingly, after six days, God finished the work of his old creation and rested. After six hours, our Lord finished the work of the new creation and rested in the tomb. Very beautiful comparison, isn't it? Now, this became like the end of the story and I mean for the, for, for the Romans and also for those that were enemies of the cross. But guess what? The best was yet to come. So Jesus suffers, suffers and is buried and in, despite the fact that condemned criminals lost this, the right for decent burial, God had Joseph of Arimathea to take care of Christ's body and give Christ a beautiful, beautiful send-off. When we think about this hymn, Christ Our Light, by Bernadette Farrell. Bernadette Farrell brings in some aspects of longing, some longings. He talks about some longings, longing for light, longing for truth, longing for peace, and longing for hope. And I believe Joseph of Arimathea and the women who were actually around him were longing for something. They were longing for the resurrection of Christ. They were longing to see Christ's victory over death. They were longing for something. Is there something you've been praying for, you've been longing for, and you've not seen? Guess what? These guys were in the same position. They were longing to see Christ resurrected. But the beauty is this. Christ's burial became very significant. I want to wrap up by that. It became significant because it was an assurance that his resurrection was a reality. The very fact that they went and buried Christ actually would actually prove that when he resurrects, then it's a reality. And he did, he resurrected, and it became a reality because his body was taken down by friends in the presence of enemies who knew that he was dead. Can you imagine that? The enemy saw he was dead. His friends saw that he was dead. And they, de and they deposited this body in a common tomb, in a cave which was hollowed on the hillside, and a great stone was put at the, at, at the, at the entrance to prove that he was dead. The significance of the burial of Christ is that Christ truly died, you know? The second thing is this, that burial also was the last humiliation that was offered for him. And it, though Joseph and Nicodemus, he said, and the women assisted in performing the work of basically uh, spicing and, and pouring fragrance on him, acts of piety and, uh, piety and love, it is, it, is, it is very, very open that Christ's burial, death and burial was significant in the sense that these people, no matter whatever they were doing, they were doing it longing to see what, that what Christ 
was, uh, had said was true. So his burial therefore became mysterious. You know, it became, it became mysterious because they didn't know what to expect. But the beautiful thing is this. As he promised, he said he was resurrected on the third day. And that is what he did. The longing of these wonderful brothers and sisters became a reality. Became a reality. And I want to remind you, friends, that during this Easter season, there are things you long for. You've been believing God for. You've been trusting God for. I want to say this, that when God promises something in his word, his word comes to pass. He is faithful and true. He died, you know, and these people longed to see him alive, you know. He resurrected, and he resurrected. And the beautiful thing is this, is that to every time, they, because these people aligned themselves with the will of God, they become partakers of the victory that Christ enjoyed. Try to imagine the joy that these women had when they heard that Jesus had raised from the risen from the dead. Try to imagine the jubilation, the exhilaration, the excitement that these people had when Jesus was raised from the dead. It is interesting that Christ died, was buried, and was raised up from the dead on the, third, on, the, on the third day. And that becomes actually our statement of faith, our statement of belief, that we believe in a resurrected Christ. So what are we sharing on today? Bernadette Farrell's hymn, On Christ Be Our Light, talks about a longing. Are you longing for something today? Believe me, Christ will answer your prayers as you continue to desire him. He will come, answer you, and bless you. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for all my viewers who have watched me these few days. And I pray that your blessings will be upon them. That even as we long for you, as we follow hard after you, that God, we will not be left behind in the move of God. I pray for all of us, and especially for the needs that are represented over those that are watching be with us, and Almighty God, may you answer these prayers, and may you, O oh Lord, answer each and every person who has watched this broadcast. I want to give you thanks and give you the praise. Lord, we thank you, and we ask that God, may your presence continue to guide us, even as we long after you, may you continue to open those doors for us, for your glory. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you and give you peace. May the Lord scatter darkness before you your path. And during this Easter, the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Easter season. It's been great having you. And bye-bye for now.